Watching apes is endlessly fascinating, especially youngsters at play and the rhythms of their family life. We see so much of ourselves in their mannerisms, the care they take with each other. strength and grace in moving around their forest home. And yet, we are encroaching on those forests more and more every year, dividing them up with roads and railways, converting large tracts to plantations, and in some places, flooding them with dams. The, the CEO of the Bank of China in London came to see me at my home and said, we want to be leaders in green finance. That's fantastic news. And by taking this decision, they have shown that that isn't just words, it's action. And that's very encouraging, because if China decides to follow green principles in all of their Belt and Road Initiative projects of new roads, new ports, new railways, new dams around the world, if they apply these green criteria to the decision of do we fund it, do we not, then the, the chances of the biosphere continuing to be habitable are much greater. And that is one thing about China. If they take a decision to do something, they will do it. So congratulations to the Bank of China. The challenges facing apes are immense. With modern machinery, forests fall like matchsticks, and fire ravages their home. Forests comprised of thousands of species are replaced by serried ranks of oil palms. From the air, the destruction is devastating. And yet palm oil is a wonder crop, producing more vegetable oil per hectare than any other crop to feed the global demand. We're all implicit in that demand when we buy things in supermarkets and put diesel into our fuel tanks. Not only do we destroy the apes' habitat, we kill them and eat them too. Ape meat to some people is a luxury item or a powerful magical meat that confers medical properties or strength or status on the people eating them. The survival of apes is a global problem that needs a global solution. I was brought up with good bush meat and I continue to eat it and I'll continue because I like it. Because it's my favorite and I've been enjoying it and I wish you to do so. Getting millions of people to plant trees might be a good idea, but hang on a sec, who planted trees before the people came along? Well, the animals did. Why aren't they doing it now? Because we've killed most of the animals. Yeah. 
Restoring natural ecosystems is our challenge for the 21st century and I think we'll do it. I, I am optimistic that enough people will realise that, that we have to change course and that the, the 18th and 19th century were, were the centuries of, of European exploration and domination of nature. The 20th century was when we realised actually we're, we're destroying it. The 21st century has to be rebuilding, restoring ecosystems and we'll be just a part of it. But we have to respect that source and we haven't been respecting our, our Earth. The Ape Alliance is a coalition of about a hundred organisations and several hundred specialists working to make the world a safe place for all apes. In the UK we raise awareness by organising events, some of them huge milestone events with well-known celebrities and famous primatologists. This evening we have the greatest experts in the world to talk to us about every one of those species. <laughs> Media coverage of these events brings the issues of ape conservation to the public. Fundraising for apes can be fun. We organise panel discussions on topics such as climate change and the illegal wildlife trade. Film is a powerful educational tool, but in many countries where apes live, many people don't have electricity. The Ape Alliance and the Great Ape Film Initiative has pioneered the use of pedal power cinemas, bringing the power of film to schools in Africa and Southeast Asia where children have never seen moving images before, so that kids grow up understanding the importance of the forests and the apes that live in those forests and are part of those forest ecosystems. All around the world we want to get this message across. So it's now possible to visit the gorillas virtually by going to vicotourism.org, hearing the sounds of the forest, seeing the gorillas, their behaviour, their interaction with the forest and realising, I hope, that the forest will not be the same if we lose them. We don't know what this species or that species does in its ecosystem, but we do know what, what gorillas and chimpanzees and orangutans and gibbons and elephants do in their ecosystem. They, they eat fruit, swallow the seeds, and leave the seeds miles from the parent plant in a little packet of first-class organic manure. Their dung is the fertilizer that gives those seeds a start in life. They're the gardeners of the forest, and the forest is essential for climate stability, so we have to protect those species in their natural habitat so that that habitat can continue to provide ecosystem services to the rest of the world.